Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. I'm your host Joseph and we're riding the rails today. Uh, traveling on the train across the country and uh, I brought the American press with me and some delightful coffee. And I'm gonna make some coffee on the train. Um, I've already done a little bit of a video on this American press. Uh, so this might be added onto it or it might be a separate one. Um, this might also just be the video I do about the lovely coffee that I have today, which is this uh, Ethiopia Gedeb Voyager uh, roast by Batdorf and Bronson. Very delicious coffee. I've had the chance to have this um, a few different ways before, before now. Uh, and I've also enjoyed it through here before, um, and we're just going to do it again. I thought it'd be fun to <laughs> to make coffee with the American press on the train. So, um, I'm going to try and do this fairly quickly. I'm recording with the phone. I don't know how long that's going to last. don't know how good the light is. Uh, we're just going to roll with it. So, um, the American press, very easy. Fill this with coffee. Fill this with water. Press it through. Hoochah, hoochah, hoochah. Coffee. Um, I went and I got some hot coffee from the fine folks in the diner car and uh, I'm just gonna put this together without falling off the table hopefully. Hold on, let me, uh, <laughs> let me adjust this here. Alright, maybe that'll help. Alright. Let's see. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna put the uh, ground, I already ground the coffee. So I'm gonna put it in here first and do the hot water last. Um, so a couple things to make a note of. Uh, I don't have control over the quality of this water, um, so that's that's just that's just something I can't control. Also, the temperature. Uh, it's going to be a lower temperature than ideal, but this coffee is also more of a medium, medium dark roast, so a lower temperature will suit it fairly well. And actually, I'll make a I'll make some comments on that after I put this together. So right now, I'm just adding adding coffee into the little pod thing here. They call it the pod. Everyone wants to call their their thing that holds coffee a pod so that they can say they have a reusable pod because everyone hates the waste that's going on with those pod machines. That's the subject for another video. I'm not getting into that right now. Um, okay, so let's see. One thing to note this was, I actually brewed on this yesterday. It's a little hard to clean, actually, um, without a sink and being able to give it a good scrub. I think when you have a sink and you can run some water and give it a scrub, it cleans fine, but otherwise, it's a little hard to get into the cracks and clean everything. Also, putting this together does make a little bit of a mess of grounds. That seems to be unavoidable, um, but it's okay. We're gonna have some good coffee and that's a bonus. I did have the opportunity um, to have some regular train coffee this morning. So uh, I can talk about that in a moment. I'm going to add the hot water now. Um, I'm just going to do it this way because I feel like I won't spill it. Oh, this is kind of the slow way to do it. Uh, so when I did this last, oh shit. Um, <laughs> Okay, this is too slow. I'm gonna take this top off. This is silly. All right, we're good. There we go. Okay, so it's not quite up to the line, but this is close enough. Um, it's gonna make me a little bit more of a concentrated brew, uh, which is just gonna give me a bit more flavor. I think it's gonna be nicer, actually. Um, so here we go. Just like I did before, I'm gonna do a pre-infuse. Um, <clears throat> Just for roughly 30 seconds, I'm just getting, uh, pushing this down until water's kind of starting to come out the top and then I'm going to let it sit there. So um, I did have the pleasure, actually I'm going to, I don't know why I wanted to give that a couple pumps. Uh, so I had the, the, uh, <laughs> the joy of having some train coffee this morning. Um, and it was kind of as you expect, just typical cheap 
batch brewed. Um, this one was in particular uh, <clears throat> under uh, under extracted, so it was watery. And uh, you know, I added some creamer and a bunch of sugars, and it was drinkable. But just reminded me a couple things. Number one, that uh, that's coffee to most people. And number two, that great coffee isn't always about the coffee. So I certainly still enjoyed having the coffee this morning, even though objectively the drink itself was not fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I did actually, yesterday on the train, made one of these at breakfast, and it was fantastic. So um, now we get to do it again. I think that sat long enough. I'm just gonna start pressing. So a couple things on this. I know that it's, I know that the temperature is lower and I think one way to make up for that is with added pressure. So I'm actually, I can't actually press that much harder, but I'm going to try to, to maybe speed up the press process here since, um, the temperature of this water is probably 190 at best, maybe 180, um, which actually works for a lot of AeroPress recipes. Um, and we're using some similar processes here. So <clears throat> I don't know if this is in the frame, but I'm currently pressing the pod through the water. It'll be done shortly. And I am applying more pressure than in the first video I did. Uh, and again, just because of the, uh, just because the temperature is lower. All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's, uh, smells pretty good. Let's see what we get. So this is actually staying pretty cool on the outside. I mean, the, the water inside was not as hot. It wasn't, uh, when I did the first video, I noted how this does not stay cool. Um, it certainly <coughs> remains, um, I mean, you can, you can pick it up, so it gets pretty warm. It doesn't get so hot that you can't pick it up, but it doesn't stay cool for sure. Uh, right now it's fine, but again, the water that went in was not that hot, so. That's good, it's definitely um, a little more concentrated, a little of a, um, maybe more like a 15 to one ratio um, on, on uh, this particular brew. Uh, just because I wasn't able to get as much water in there, but I think it works well. Uh, this is pretty rich. Pretty rich and chocolatey. Now, um, speaking about this particular coffee, this Ethiopia by Batdorf. So I had this on the Kalita, and I've had this on the Chemex, and I've had this on here. Uh, and it's different in every single one of them. On the Kalita, uh, the Kalita pulls out a lot of really strong fruit characteristics like um, or sweet tangerine, nectarine, something like that. Um, I know that's kind of, you know, one's a citrus and one's a stone fruit, but um, it's kind of in that sort of area of, of extremely fruity uh, fruit juice, like rich fruit juice or very biting into a very rich ripe fruit um, is kind of what, what that is like. But it also carried with it this sort of um, burnt taste. I don't know if it was actually burnt, because I look at the coffee and the coffee's not burnt. It's certainly roasted darker, but there was a, a sort of hint of, a taste that more than a hint, it was a distinct flavor of something burny going through the coffee. Attention. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know many people like that sort of flavor. Um, to me, it's just, it stands out to me. It's, it's usually something I don't like in my coffee. Um, so that's in the that's in the Kalita, and the Chemex that disappeared, but so did a lot of the fruit juiciness. Uh, it just kind of muted everything. Um, certainly made a cleaner cup in the Chemex, owing to the thicker uh, filtering. This is quite a bit different. This is much more chocolatey, um, like a dark chocolate. I can taste kind of the fruit. But, but in a way that you would from a dark chocolate or a really good truffle or something like that. Uh, so this is really highlighting the deeper, sweeter richness of this coffee. 
part of that right now could certainly be due to the temperature of the water. Um, although I did brew this uh, before leaving with properly temperatured and filtered water so I can have a good baseline. Uh, I can say that this is slightly different than that and I don't know if that's due to the quality of the water, probably more due to the temperature. Temperature has a huge impact on what it's pulled out of the coffee when you brew. Um, and that's part of the reason that uh, cheap automated drippers are usually looked down upon is just because and you can certainly make a really good cup of coffee with like a $20 Mr. Coffee, for example. You can do that. But over time, the heating element is going to break down and it's just not going to be able to produce water that's hot enough, really, um, or consistent in temperature. And that's usually the, the actual problems with those machines. So well, this is something you'll run into when you're traveling. If you're not able to boil the water yourself or, you know, what have you. Um, but I mean, it's fun. I, I pressed a really nice coffee on a train here. Um, so, you know, American press, pretty good for that. Um, makes great coffee. Only downside again, a little bit challenging to clean. Uh, I definitely can't get this clean on a train. Uh, I can get all the grounds out. I can kind of scoop out the remaining, but there's stuff that gets in the crevices and there are oils that get stuck on the side. And um, I just need, I need, uh, I guess maybe if I took uh, a rag and some cleaning equipment with me, then maybe, but um, by itself, uh, that's okay. I mean, it's, let's talk about this cup of coffee compared to the coffee I had this morning. This isn't a completely different world than that. I mean, this this tastes like a really well-made cup of coffee, and that tastes like... Actually, so, I was thinking about this. Um, the comparison to freshly roasted, freshly ground, freshly made, you know, well-made coffee, compared to what you might... Um, what you might get in a batch brewer or if you go to any of the major brewers or anything like that, I like to compare it to, um, you know, this is this is more like making my own meal from scratch at home. Uh, is getting fresh ingredients, making, putting it together, making a really good meal, compared to heating up a frozen meal in the microwave. And there can be crossovers of that because you can certainly prep large meals and then um, freeze them and then you know heat them up later but it, it, it's still it's not as good as just doing it fresh so that's kind of what uh, is going on when we're talking about fresh coffee and you know freshly ground coffee properly roasted properly made all that sort of thing <sighs> it's Ethiopia though oh right now I actually so on the tasting notes, they have cherry, blackberry, plum, passion fruit. I'm actually, getting I'm getting a lot of plum um, in this method. I wouldn't, I, I don't think I got it in like the Kalita. Um, part of that could be due to my Kalita brewing method. I'm still working on that. But this is a very nice coffee. I'd say that this particular, so this Ethiopia. Um, by Batdorf. Very good fruity coffee for people who are used to darker coffees, I'd say. If you're trying to like get into figuring out coffee and you want something fruity, but you want some of the deeper chocolatey or more roasted flavors that you might be used to, um, this is a good, this is a really good option. And that roastiness isn't coming through. Um, maybe a little bit actually, but I think maybe it's more like so it's really like a, I think I mentioned this, like a dark chocolate, like a, like a really well-made dark chocolate that's fruity. And that kind of roastiness has mellowed out and turned into that sort of bright cocoa bitterness. It's like, it's like cocoa, cocoa bitterness. So there we have it. That's, um, 
kind of dual, dual video here, the Batdorf Ethiopia Get Deb, which is really nice. Um, and I'm going to have a lot more to say about Batdorf, so we're going to do another video with them later on. And then also this American Press uh, as a travel item. I wanted to see how well it would travel. Um, I mean, it fits nicely, easy to go in the bag, pretty easy to brew with. Uh, again, only challenge is just the cleanup, which, yeah, you can pull the grounds out and dump them out, but there's still a lot to do after that. So I don't know. To be honest, I, I'm not sure I would continue traveling with it. Um, maybe. Hard to say. I think the I think the AeroPress cleans easier um, of the two options. Although this brews easier, honestly, than the AeroPress because um, it's kind of hard to make a mess with this. You just put water in, and then you put the thing in, and then you brew it, and then you have coffee. Um, so I have to ruminate on that some more. I don't travel as much anymore these days. Um, I haven't been traveling as much, rather, I certainly will again, but uh, whether or not I bring a brewer with me when I travel is perhaps more to do with my interest in traveling and coffee uh, and less to do with the actual brewer. That is, I may not. I may not bring a brewer with me next time I travel altogether just because I like having the opportunity to explore coffee where I go. I don't necessarily need to make it uh, along the way, but uh, again, that's a whole nother topic. So, um, thank you for joining me on this train ride, and uh, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this coffee and watch the world go by.